Okay, so um, I'm just gonna try to wing this here. And uh, I thought I'd put out just a quick video on um, setting up some basic sagas in mass transit. Um, just kind of looking online, um, there was a little bit of this that was like, you know, five minute video, and then the other ones were like an hour plus long to go through it. Um, so I got my little cheater project here, so hopefully I don't have to refer to that too much. Um, so let's get started. Um, so a saga is a way to manage distributed transactions across um, across multiple services. Um, they're kind of long running transactions. Um, one way I like to think of this is just if you have something that has multiple states to it, um, multiple like maybe a long running workflow could be could be done through a saga. Um, and specifically, we're going to be tr uh, implementing a orchestration based saga. Uh, this is not a, a choreography, so we're going to be referring to the mass transit uh, state machine. All right, so uh, let's get rolling here. Um, I'm going to implement this uh, burger cooker. So we're going to have three states. We're going to have uh, uncooked or maybe uh, ordered, uh, uncooked, and cooked. So uh, and maybe we'll do something of like it's got a, the burger has to be cooked to rare, medium, or well done. All right, so to get started, um, we can utilize the uh, mass transit template. Um, that's, if you need to install it, the command is here. It's just .NET new install mass transit templates. Um, I already have it installed, so when it runs, uh, it will, actually, I guess it looks like it just installed it again. I'll take it. Um, so here are the commands, uh, and specifically, we're going to look at this MT state machine. So let's give that a shot. .NET. Um, T state machine. I'm oh, sorry, .NET new. New MT state machine. Uh, and let's call it burger. Cooker. Okay, so if we look in our project here, it'll automatically create these state machine uh, related uh, files. Um, that includes our state, our state machine, state definition, and a kind of starting event here. Um, since I don't really have a project at this point, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a worker project. So. If you already have a project that you're adding to, you don't need to do this, but since we're starting from scratch, um, let's go ahead and do this, and it'll give us a way to start. Um, it'll give us a way to start and be able to you know, publish some events and watch things move through our saga. So MT worker. Um, I think it should just take the name by default. Let's just see what it does. There you go, okay. So now we have our program CS. We can do all of our configuration here. Um, this is the burger cooker. Um, and yeah, it should give you a working project right off the bat. Just gonna make sure everything is a-okay. So just running a quick build. Cool, and then I'm paranoid, so I'll just hit F5 as well. And let OmniSharp try to Try to run this thing, make sure it's happy. Okay, cool. Oh wait, uh, hold on, is this running the wrong project? It's, uh, it's running this like practice project. Let me move that out of here, because it's already doing too much. And, uh, you know what, let's just move into the burger cooker project only. Close this guy. 
I'll open that again if I forget what I'm doing. Okay, so um, let's kind of map out what we want to do beforehand. So um, let's define our states. So we're going to have a ordered state. Someone comes up, they order a burger, right? Um, and then take some time. So we need to, uh, our burgers at this point, um, to be ordered and maybe let's go with begin cooking. Um, begin cooking. And no space. Uh, and then finish cooking and then deliver. So our state machine can transition between these four states. And then let's try to think of like, what are the properties that, uh, that we want to track? Um, so maybe the um, customer, customer name who ordered it, um, the, uh, what's it called? Cookedness, wellness, cook, cook temp. I think that's what it's called. Um, and let's let's just stick with those two parameters for now. So we're gonna we're gonna have a burger that gets ordered. It's gonna be in cooking. We'll say it's finished cooking, and then it'll be delivered. Um, so let's go to our state machine here, and this is our state. We'll call these the state val use. Some reason that looks misspelled to me, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't. All right, so in here, uh, Mass Transit will set up these default values. Um, we do need to keep current state and the GUI, uh, this correlation ID. Um, this correlation ID is particularly important because it refers to it's the uniqueness of that particular saga. Uh, if you have multiple sagas running at the same time, you want to know if events uh, that are triggered in the system belong to this saga or maybe another saga, uh, and that's how it's done. So this is very important to, that, uh, that this is properly set or and uniquely set as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's apply some of our state values here. So put a customer name and. Uh, I'll just do another string, cook temp, why not? Um, and in here, so these these are the things that are going to be maintained in our state throughout uh, throughout our saga. Um, all right, so let's move on. Um, you can see that Mass Transit kind of already set up everything by default. Uh, it did give us a default event here. Um, called burger cooker event and you can see it referred to here in the initially uh, it sets up this default created uh, we're gonna go ahead and change some of this um, so first let's just start with the event so referring back to our states let's just put this uh, over here um, so we have a our event is burger cooker event. All right, so let's let's expand on that and make it a little more descriptive. So how about burger cooker ordered ordered event. So this is going to be our initial thing. Bam, it gets ordered. Uh, our order is created. Um, and in this order, we need to say, what does the customer want? What is this event? What do we care about in this event? Um, in this case, we know who ordered it and and what the cook temp is. So let's give that a go. Uh, I just tend to set these manually. You can set up an init however you want. Um, but for my sake, I'm just going to set, give those a set. My C sharp is not very good, so don't uh, don't take this as uh, any any uh, real advice here on how to set those up. Um, but hopefully this uh, demonstrates the, the concept. 
So anyways, um, we have a customer name and a cook temperature, and that is our order. So going back to our state machine, let's bring this, make this a little bigger. Um, the initial state. So our initial state, we wanted to be ordered, right? So let's do ordered. And then down here on line 24 um, is where Mass Transit has created our, our default state. So our, our one of, defined one of our states. Um, so let's go ahead and refactor that. This is burger cooker created, or geez, ordered. Ordered event. Um, and then in here is like, what do we do when this event comes in? What do we, what do we, the work we want to do in this then? And then the next part is, okay, transition to, um, I didn't need to refactor that, but we'll transition to the next state, begin cooking. Begin cooking. All right, and that's gonna show up red because we didn't define the state. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, um, these context, so, on the left side here, this refers to context dot, this, these are the, the, the values that are tracked in the saga. Um, the default template sets that to instance, which is deprecated, so you want, you'll want to change this um, to whatever values we're looking to track. So that's probably customer name in this case, and then the right side is the message. So the message, Uh, the message is coming is our event that's coming in. So the message is this burger cooker event here. Uh, I need to rename this file. Let's just do that while we're in here. Um, burger cooker ordered event. Da, 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 da. Let's restart OmniSharp just because it loves to do that. Um, okay. So yeah, the right side here is. Oops, of, of this is our message. So this is the event that's coming in. And we're going to message dot and match it up to our customer name. So our message is going to come in. This is our saga's state. So this is the burger cooker state over here. And this is going to be maintained with our saga so that we keep tracking those things. Um, Let's set a couple more values. Let's see if my C sharp is good enough to do that. Hey, look at that. No. Nothing too horrible. What's the name? Semicolon. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, fix some of these. Sorry, I don't have a. Uh, this editor really set up all that well. All right, so we also care about the cook temp, right? So let's save that off. Cook temp and cook temp. All right, so we've we've gotten our burger order in. Um, we've recorded some data about it. We have where initial state is ordered. Um, and then we're going to be like, okay, we got our order, let's, let's begin cooking. So this part down here where it says transition to uh, begin cooking, um, that's gonna, it's gonna move this saga into this next uh, event state. So we're gonna copy this guy just cause I don't really wanna type things again. And we're gonna change our initially to during. And we say during be begin cooking we're going to receive an event uh, or we're going to do our actions to begin cooking. Now in sagas there is two components that are needed to advance state. Uh, you need the state itself to be in this transition to category and then you also need the event to actually occur. 
So in this case, we only have one event right now, this burger cooker ordered event. Um, and then what we want to do is, okay, it, it, when we're here, we want to then say we're going to start cooking. We're going to start cooking our burger, right? So let's uh, create a new event. Um, why don't we name it in here while well, we got it here? So we'll get burger cooker. Oh, this needs to be ordered. Ordered event. Ordered. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, I just didn't rename that part. Okay, so down here, let's say bar burger cooker. Um, in cooking event. So we don't have this event yet, so let's go ahead and make that. Um, we probably don't really care about these guys at the moment. This is our, our work section. Um, and let's go ahead and make a new event. Um, I'm going to grab this here, this kind of uh, event linking stuff. So let's do cooker begin cooking event. Now we need to actually create the type. So let's do that. I'll just copy this existing event burger cooker uh, in cooking event. Okay, so in here, we're just using these events to update um, update state. Um, so these things are already set as part of our um, as part of our saga. Um, I'm going to leave them in here because this way, you know, if uh, we want to use them for something else, uh, we can actually you know use them in other parts of the system. Um, but really, in order to just to advance to this cooking state, we don't really need it. Um, all right. So now that that's configured, what am I missing? It's a type. It's not valid. Burger cooker begin cooking. cooking event. Do I have like a parenthesis in the wrong place? Because there's that guy. In cooking event. There we go. Okay, I just had some parentheses messed up. All right. Um, so now the now we can uh, basically this is going to advance the state. Um, but what happens is, do we? How do we? How do we actually trigger this? So on one hand, we could do something very simple, I and mean, we could just publish this event from here, um, and it will actually execute and uh, whatever's in this then, because we have at that point both this event being thrown and the transition of state to begin cooking. Um, but typically, this is something where you'd want to 
add a consumer or have another part of the system that's actually going to um, trigger this event being being uh, rolled forward. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's add a consumer um, that's actually going to do the work in this case. So uh, .net new consumer um, cook burger. Oops, sorry, ah, I forgot my name. Ah, almost. Okay, so here we have a cook burger uh, contract as well as the consumer itself. Um, so what we can do is from our state machine, uh, let's go ahead and produce a, a message. So from here we could say context.publish um, and then we're say cook burger and I think we need to give it some parameters. fix a value. Uh, so we need a little more than that. Uh, maybe we're going to cook a burger to cook temp. And oh, oops. New cook burger. Temp equals medium. Do I have some parentheses in the wrong spot again? Probably. Wish. Here, just so I get my parentheses right. Cook burger. New. Burger cp dot set uh, dot cook temp equals medium. That's why. Okay. Now can I use my syntax? No. All right. All right. All right. Cb. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to cook this, this burger to medium. Um, da, 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 da. Let's go to our cook burger consumer. So um, we could say if context dot uh, uh, message dot cook temp equal uh, cook temp. Cook temp um, equals medium. Um, we're just doing some dumb string values. Obviously, you would use you know an actual type or enum or something better uh, in this case, but um, we're lazy. Thread dot sleep. Uh, what is it? Is that thread dot sleep? Uh, handy dandy Google. Let's see. Uh, thread dot sleep method. Oh, maybe I just need to include a. Oh, there we go. Thread dot sleep. Um, let's do five. It's five seconds. It's five seconds to cook a burger to medium. Let's just do a really basic if else block here. A rare medium else if uh, burned. Okay, 
Uh, rare takes two seconds, medium takes five, and this takes, oh, 50 seconds, why not? Uh, that's gonna take too long to wait. 10 seconds it is, okay. Um, so do we have some delay, we have some long running process here. Um, and in this, so why don't we, in this case, we're, we're, we're publishing, we're saying we're going to publish something uh, with a cook temp of medium. Uh, let's, instead of hard coding it like that, let's get it from our uh, event. So it's going to be context.message.cooktemp. Semicolon. All right. And now we will be able to cook our burger. Um, and then we'll have another state here. And this is finished cooking. Finished cooking. Uh, da, da, da. Finished cooking. And this is just do. Eh, we don't need to deliver it. Let's just say it's done. Completed. All right. In addition to completed, we finished cooking that burger. We deserve to be done. All right, so in here, uh, we now need to define yet another event, which is the finished cooking event. Cooking, transition to completed. Um, maybe we'll just, you know, say done cooking burger. We'll do um, system.console.write line. Or we'll say order up four. And then we need the customer name. So uh, saga. Dot Customer name, um, cook temp, and context dot cook temp. All right, so in this case, um, we go ahead and here we publish our. Uh, Burger cooker begin, or sorry, our uh, cook cook burger. From cook burger, we can wrong one. We can publish context publish, and we do new burger finished burger cooker finished event. Um, there isn't really anything too important to set in there. This just tells us we mainly just need the correlation ID. Um, in fact, we need to pass that into this context. So let's do that before we forget. All right, so in here, we're, send, we're setting this message 
and then we want to do cd dot um, cook burger does not have one. Put in our correlation ID. Okay, um, and now we can set it. Relation ID equals context dot our sagas correlation ID so that we keep track of that this burger belongs to this saga. Um, and now when we go and finish cooking our burger, we can set that correlation ID to make sure that we return it to the right place. So Relation ID equals context dot message dot correlation ID. What do I have wrong here? I got some wrong with my syntax. Um, let's see where I've used this in the past. Like I said, my my C sharp is not that strong, so bear with me. Just do this the old-fashioned way. Um, burger cooker finished event. The BCFCE. Let's go to new. And dot correlation ID equals context dot message correlation ID. All right. All right, there we go. Um, so now our event will come back and we'll end up in this during here. So for finish cooking and burger finish cooking, we should see a console out that says, right, uh, that says order up for the customer and the cook temp. So we do have one gap in our system right now. Um, and it's that when we're in this initially state here, we need to have something to transition it down into this begin cooking. Because in order for these blocks to execute, you need both the state and the event. Uh, in our case, we have the state transfer happening here, or transition happening here, um, but we do not have an event. So since this first step here is mainly uh, just for demonstration, uh, let's go ahead and just throw an event from here. Uh, and that way we can, um, that way we can get to the next state. So let's do burger, cooker, begin cooking event. cook temps in the saga, the correlation ID is there. We should transition down to here with cook temp correlation ID uh, as well. And then we'll send off this cook burger um, to send us off to the cook burger consumer. And it's gonna reply with a burger's finished cooking. Um, and then I think we're set. So. Uh, the last part of this is we need some way to initiate um, 
send some events. Uh, you could do this by having some kind of uh, web API. You could have a test that executes this, uh, look up mass transit testing. Um, and then uh, I'm just gonna add in a .NET, um, or what's it called, a, um, a worker. Uh, uh, is it not a worker? What is it? Da -da -da -da. Oh, wait. I already have that. Um, I already built the worker here. I need to put in a background, uh, background service. So uh, I am going to open up my cheater project here and just copy the one I have out of here because I can never remember the uh, background service. And in here, this uh, hosted service part of it, just to save everyone a bit of time. Okay, add the required package. There we go. All right, so um, this is just pulled out of another project. So let's go ahead and refactor it. So in this case, we have this background service. Uh, every 10 seconds, it's going to produce a new event. Uh, that event's going to trigger our uh, our Saga state machine. So let's uh, start from the beginning. So burger cooker begin begin cooking event. So let's put that in there. Um, and then in here, we can define our um, what's it called? Our cook temp. And our, let's do cook temp equals uh, medium and our correlation ID. We also need to specify our uh, customer name equals, name equals Bob. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Okay, nothing. Uh, let's go do some debugging. All right, so uh, from our state machine, Let's see if we're getting here into the first ordered contact, or the first uh, initially in our ordered state. Aha, I think I might know why. We need to make sure that when we add new states, we also add in the correlation. Although I think we should end up in that first one. So this may not be the actual problem. Burger cooker, burger cooker ordered event. Let's look at our publisher, burger cooker. Oh, <laughs> burger cooker ordered as our start. All right, so let's start this up and let's see if we hit our breakpoint this time. There we go. Okay, so remember you need to add in these correlation values because uh, if you need to correlate by something other than correlation ID, uh, that needs to be defined up here. Um, all right, so we're setting our customer name is Bob, cook temp is medium. Let's go ahead and drop this one over here. Okay, seems like we're still receiving more messages, um, but why aren't we transitioning to begin cooking? 
So earlier when I said we need to define another event, well, we did define the event, but we didn't do anything with it. We need to actually publish. All right, so publish the event. Let's run it again. All right, we got there. All right, we made it to our second state. Uh, let's check, let's put a breakpoint in our um, burger cooker consumer here. Okay, we got a couple things. Boom, there we go. So we have a, a burger context message, cook temp. In this case is cook temp is no, oh no. What's going to happen? We're going to crash somewhere. Or we're just not going to do anything. Or we get a uh, unhandled object or is not set to an instance of an object. All right, so let's do some debugging and see what happened here. So our cook temp came in. Did it actually get set at this point? Um, does our message have cook temp in it? Maybe we don't really want to be pulling it from message. Uh, we've already set it at a different point. So our message cook temp here did not get set. So when this event gets thrown, we have two options. Um, we, we could probably either remove it from this event or we can pull it directly off the saga. So we could do context.saga.cookTemp or we can do uh, put the cook temp here in our message and that will get passed in. Or we can do both like I just did. Let's run it again. Okay, do we have a cook temp? Medium, cool. Let's move on. Running medium, we'll sleep for five seconds. And now we're getting more and more messages. Although I see an error down here. Let's stop and see what it is. So it says, not accepted in state begin cooking. So what you get this error when you're transitioning something, you're trying to send a message uh, to a state that is not acceptable. So let's check and see. So we have our begin cooking. We know that one works, that comes in here. Let's look at the cook burger consumer. Burger cooker finished cooking event. Okay. Burger cooker finished cooking event. Ah, look at this. Transition to begin cooking. This needs to be finished cooking. Let's try again. Okay, we're in here. We should be hitting, we should sleep for five seconds. And then we're hitting another one. So we're getting more. There we go. Order up for Bob. Medium. So we've successfully created our state machine. Um, we're sending the same message every single time, but that's okay. You can see this growing here. Um, and what we could do is we could change around our test data so that then the, um, you know, we're not sending the same message every time, but this is kind of how you'd implement a basic state machine, uh, saga for mass transit. Uh, in the next video, we will go over um, the persistence, um, so specifically using Entity Framework. It's late. I'm going to go to sleep. See you later.